Welcome to section 2, working with the GitLab interface. What can GitLab interface do for me? In this video, we'll take a look at GitLab interface, project in groups, how to start and fork the project, searching for files, and looking through the repository history. Let's take a look at how GitLab is structured by moving around the interface. Starting on project homepage, we can see our current projects. Projects are divided into three sections. Your projects, this list projects I'm already involved in, start projects, these are projects that I can mark to find easily, and explore projects. These are all internal projects in this GitLab instance. To start a project, let's open one project that we want to start. At the top, we can see Start button. If we hit it, we started this project. To unstart the project, hit the same button again. Now, if we return to our projects group, we should see this project start in this Start Project section. Now, if we open Start Projects, we should see this project there. Let's see what options do we have inside the project. We will talk more about notification settings when we will do user settings. We can start and unstart the project. We can fork the project. And we can get links where we can clone the project. Below project name, we have some statistics. How much commits do we have? How much branches do we have? How much tags do we have? And that is the size of this project. We also have some programming language statistics. Below description is where the real fun begins. On the right side, we can take a look at project history. This will list all our previous commits to this project. Find file where we can search for our file. Web IDE, where we can edit our repository directly in the browser. And Download button. Download button will actually package our repository for download. This will not allow us to push changes back to this repository. We have to use clone for this. On the left side, we can switch between branches. We can modify our project directly from this web interface. If we click on plus sign, we'll be able to add new file, upload new file, create new directory, create new branch, and create new tag. Let's start with new branch. We need to get branch a name and decide from which branch we'll start new branch. We can see branch has changed. If I once again look at the history. Okay. Let's create new folder in this branch. This actually created new commit for us. If you look at the history, you'll see that here we have new commit. Now, when we created our new branch, we can see it in the drop down list from the branch selection. We can switch branches here also. We can make a personal copy of the project by forking it. Let's go to Explore Project and fork one of the public projects. Let's take the first one. 
We can fork it by selecting Fork from the top menu. Then we can select a namespace when we can save it to. And this project was successfully forked. We'll be able to find this project in our own projects now. In this video, we took a look how can we manage our project directly from GitLab web interface.